It all started when I bought this Landel mailbox. I was drawn to its design, but then I had an idea. What if, instead of just doing its usual functions, it worked like one of those retro AI console you see in old movies? To really unlock what this little device could do, I knew the first step was figuring out its keyboard. I wanted people to be able to type straight to the AI, and then have it answer back either with text or even sound. So I cracked it open. On the main board, I spotted two FPC connectors handling the keyboard's flat cables. I carefully pulled them out and repurposed them on my breadboard. And just like that, the very first prototype was born. A flat cable keyboard is actually pretty simple. It's just a matrix of switches printed on plastic film. The traces from the keys are split into two groups, rows and columns. When you press a key, it closes the connection between one row and one column. And that flat flexible cable or FFC just carries the signals out to the connector. Now, I could have connected each pin directly to the GPIOs on my microcontroller, but let's just say that's not the brightest idea. Instead, I went with something smarter, an I2C expander. I used the PCF8574, which basically gives you extra GPIO pins over I2C. Some of these pins act as row drivers, switching low one at a time. Others are set up as columns input, so they can read back which line went low. By scanning through the rows and checking the columns, the ESP32 can figure out exactly which key was pressed. The keyboard has a total of 23 pins, so to handle them all, I ended up using three I2C expanders. Now it was time for a bit of coding to figure out how exactly this keyboard works. The first thing I wrote was a simple tester for the PCF8574 chips. Here is how it works. The ESP32 drives each pin low one by one, and whenever you press a key, it checks if another pin also goes low. That way, it can map out which pins are connected in the key matrix. The serial monitor stars shows up for the pins that are detected and dots for the ones not pressed yet. Next up, making the key presses mean something. Out of the box, a keyboard matrix doesn't say this is H. It only tells you a row and column. So in this sketch, I give every switch a temporary ID. When I press a key, the serial monitor shows that ID and I tag it with the real character from the keyboard. As I go, the lookup table fills in. Once a key is mapped, future presses print the actual letter or symbol instead of the placeholder. A few minutes of tapping later, and I've got a almost complete key map that translate raw matrix coordinate into real characters. Next, I needed the ESP32 to actually talk, so I set up a simple text-to-speech. I found a great library with exactly the voice I wanted, and it worked surprisingly well. This video is sponsored by NextPCB. If you're working on a custom hardware project, NextPCB is a solid choice for PCB manufacturing. They offer high quality boards, fast production times, and support for everything from simple prototype to advanced multi-layer designs. Check them out through the link in the description and thanks for the next PCB for supporting the channel. Hardware wise, the chain is simple. The ESP32 streams audio over I2S and the Max9835 converts it to Class D output and a tiny 4 to 8 ohm speaker brings the voice to life. For the AI, I hooked into LLM APIs, DeepSeq or ChatGPT, so the device could actually hold a conversation. To test it, I started simple, serial monitor in and out. Once that worked, I added a temporary OLED so I could see what I was typing and read the replies right on the device. It's rough, but it turns the mailbox into a tiny self-contained chat terminal, exactly the old school AI console vibe I was aiming for. The next step was adding the display this device really needed. 
The original mailbox used a character display, so I searched around online for something similar. What I found was a 4x4 character display, the perfect match for that retro look. But just like the keyboard, it came with way too many pins to hook up directly. So once again, I turned to an I2C expander to handle all the connections and keep things simple. The new display was a little smaller than the original, and at first it didn't quite look right. Then I had an idea, what if I reused part of the old screen? I peeled the film of the original display and placed it over the new one. It worked like a tint glass hiding imperfections, giving the characters a subtle color filter and adding to that retro vibe I was going for. After all this, it was time for a proper PCB. I couldn't just stuff a bunch of wires and modules into the frame and call it a day. It needed to be clean. So I designed a custom PCB for the build. If you've seen my other projects, you know I almost always go for black PCBs. But this time, I had to break the rules. The classic green PCB just felt right. It gives off that perfect retro vibe. And honestly, who cares if we'll probably never see it again once it's inside. So after soldering all the components, I hooked up the keyboard and the display and ran another full test of the whole system. So far this project has been coming together nicely, well most of it. I had a few hiccups with some old mailbag parts but honestly I expected that. This thing's been around for years. After putting it all together I ran into a display issue mostly because of the tight space. But no big deal. I'm excited about this whole old tech AI console concept and I've got plans to fix those glitches and even add vision to the mix. I will continue this project as a hobby, but if you want to see more about it, let me know in the comment section.